Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here. It's Wednesday, January the 11th, 2023. Welcome to the show. We appreciate you guys being here. Fascinating day, man. We got, you know, I've been following these markets for a long, 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 long time. Longer than probably a lot of you viewers have even been alive. And I got to say, I've never seen things as mixed up and stupid and crazy as they are today. It's just nuts, guys. But we're going to go over all of that for you guys right now. Markets today. Well, kind of a not much happening day. Everybody's holding their breath till tomorrow. But stocks were up. Market across the board. Decent day for the Dow. Um, I think the market now, you know, they've been leaking these CPI numbers. The market is expecting inflation numbers to come continue to come down they're hoping that this will be the third or fourth consecutive month with declines in the inflation rate i think they're expecting 6.7 i want to say on the top line number still not a great number but significantly higher than better than the 9.1 percent we had or even the seven and change we had last month so market expecting good inflation numbers tomorrow i guess they're kind of also hoping that the Employment data that will be coming along, along with that will be favorable. Market betting today that uh, things, the news will be good tomorrow. Bond markets today also up. Uh, yields coming down. 10-year down 6 basis points, sitting at 3.55%. The 2-year down 4 basis points, sitting at 4.22%. So we got this... Still got the big spread, still got the big inversion going. The bond market not looking healthy, but nice to see it rally every once in a while. I think that these rates uh, that we're looking at today are going to be looking really good compared to where they'll be six months from now. I don't really believe in this pivot that everybody's hoping for. I think we're going to have higher rates through this year. We'll see who's right and who's not. Uh, the dollar today basically flat. Not much change in the index. I've been saying that the dollar is king, but I got to stand corrected. One of our viewers in comments yesterday made the note and taken that the peso actually has been kicking the crap out of the dollar. Peso on a big rally. Um, so forgive me, guys. Peso going up versus the dollar as opposed to everything else, especially over the past year or so. Um, so anyway, thanks for your input, brother. And... Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys keeping an eye on what I'm saying and, you know, double checking the veracity of everything I'm saying. Uh, metals today, mixed day in metals, not really much happening. Gold up marginally, up a dollar ten, sitting at eighteen hundred seventy nine dollars per ounce. Silver up sixteen or down actually sixteen cents at twenty three dollars forty one cents per ounce. It's kind of weird to have gold rally in the last couple of days and silver declining, but. I guess there's a lot of institutional buying. I was reading that China bought like 62 tons of gold at the end of the year last year. So I think that you have institutional buyers, India moving into their gold buying season, um, gold rally going to continue. I really believe that's true. Uh, oil was up again today. West Texas Intermediate up $2.50 sitting at $77.62 per barrel. Still not an outrageous number. I think that uh, you know the trend on oil still seems to be down, even though it's been rallying the last couple of days. But as long as it's under $80, there's no rally in oil, guys. Bitcoin today up 80, just under $85 at $84.72, sitting last I looked $17,545. These markets, guys, you gotta understand, where we are right now, these markets are basically being driven day to day by the data that comes out that day or anticipation of the data that's going to be coming out of the next day or the next, within the next couple of days, which is what we're seeing today. Not a lot of news to, for the market to digest today. So now the market's looking ahead to tomorrow's CPI numbers and the market's betting that the numbers are going to look good that's why you see a rally, right? So we'll see, guys. I mean, anybody that believes that we're out of this inflation woods already, I think is deluding themselves. I think, we're, you know, bringing the inflation rate down from 9 to 6.7, 
took them a lot of rate increases to do. We'll see what it's going to take to bring rates down from 6.7 back to 2%. That's a pretty big leap, guys. And the lower you get, the harder it is to move the needle down. So it's going to be fascinating to see you know, how the Fed deals with all of the responsibilities, how, with yesterday's show, if you guys were listening, you know, we were talking about the Fed anticipating some political blowback on their program. It's already starting up here with the Democrats. Pretty soon you'll be hearing the Republicans doing the same thing. Um, so it's just going to be a fascinating next couple of months or even the rest of this year, truthfully. I think that if the Fed were to pivot or even signal that they were going to pivot on these rate increases, you could see this stock market rally just really blow up, like literally 1,000-point rallies. So it's going to be fascinating to watch it all play out. Um, today in news, interesting stuff you guys need to know. Interesting stuff today, guys. So here we go. Rent costs across the country finally starting to come down a little bit. They were out there in the stratosphere, guys. People were literally turning homeless buying camper vans and friggin' living in tents because they couldn't afford rates and rate rents and rents were going up so quickly. Literally, people were getting sticker shock. Like, you know, people were paying $1,200 a month. Their lease expires. Now the landlord wants $2,000 a month and people were getting just these blow away numbers. Things are starting to calm down now. As more houses are on the market and real estate continues to slow, you're starting to see these rent numbers coming down, providing a little relief for working people. Hallelujah, it's about time. Um, another interesting thing you guys need to hear today was interest rates on credit cards now standing at record highs. At the same time, as Americans are piling on crazy amounts of brand new revolving debt, $28 billion just last month alone. Well, guess what, guys? The average rate on a credit card now sitting at just under 20% and rising, depending on who you're doing your credit, you know, who you have your credit card with and, you know, your credit and the things, different things like that, you could be paying as high as 25, 28% on interest on credit cards. So please, guys, as we've been advising since we started this show, do everything you can not to add on any new debt, especially credit card debt. And if you have credit card debt, do every little thing you possibly can do to chip away at that debt and bring that number down, reducing those payments. Making credit card payments, there's nothing worse. Nothing worse. Um, inflation right now, this article I was reading was interesting. It was saying that inflation, the actual inflation, is moving now from products to services, including wages. So you have wages and the cost of services, legal stuff, and different services people pay for every day, rising crazy. All of a sudden, that's where the inflation is now. At the same time, inflation on goods coming down, or actually prices on goods starting to decline now as we break up some of these supply chain issues. I'm still not talking about eggs here or groceries, but some stuff starting to, prices starting to moderate a little bit. So we'll see if that can continue. Um, also interesting today, Jamie Dimon, chairman of JP Morgan Bank. You know, last year he came out and said that, you know, they were all freaking out about the Federal Reserve and they raised the interest rate increases. So Jamie Dimon had come out and said we are, he was predicting an economic hurricane here in the U.S., talking about how bad these rate increases were going to be for the economy. Well, Jamie now kind of looking at the way the numbers are breaking out and realizing he's going to look like a dumbass because he's wrong. You know, there is no hurricane. We may have a, a recession, but it's certainly not going to resemble a hurricane. So Jamie Dimon now backpedaling pretty hard from those comments, talking about, well, maybe a soft landing is possible and other such nonsense. And finally, wrapping things up today, guys, you know, every morning I go out and I do my exercise. I try to get some, get some miles under my belt and keep this girlish figure here, you know. And uh, when I'm walking, I typically am listening to the news or a podcast or an audio book or whatever. This morning, I had a chance to listen to a lecture from Warren Buffett. Pretty long one, too. 56 minutes of lecture from him. And it was fascinating because Warren Buffett, in this lecture, was basically saying to his audience, 
a lot of the same things that I've been saying to you guys, my audience. He talked about living below your means and saving money from your income. It was fascinating because, you know, Warren Buffett, out of all the ultra-rich, you know, the guy's probably worth close to $100 billion. Um, you know, this is a guy that still lives a normal lifestyle. Drives a pickup truck. He lives in the same house he lived in, bought in 1959. So he's lived in that house more than 60 years. This is a guy that could live in, could buy up friggin' half of New York City if he wanted to. Still has a basic house in Omaha, Nebraska. Drives a pickup truck. Eats McDonald's, Dairy Queen. Um, you know, this is a guy who's living basically a normal middle class life even though he's rich enough to live any kind of lifestyle he wants, making, you know, a lot of these mega billionaires who live these extravagant lifestyles look like chumps if he wanted to. And it was interesting because he was saying that any American can live the way he does. You know, most Americans, at least until very recently, could afford to buy a house, could have a pickup truck and probably already do, could afford to eat at McDonald's and, you know, the regular working guy restaurants, we're not talking about the fancy stuff on the strip or whatever, but you know, most people could afford the same lifestyle that Warren Buffett did if they were doing just some very basic things correct in their life, saving money, not carrying debt. He actually went on a special tangent regarding credit card debt, made me laugh because he was suggesting buying stock in Visa rather than you know charging on a Visa card. So I thought that was fascinating. Intra I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is go through that, uh, go through that again, find some of the stuff a little more specifically that Buffett was saying that we've been saying on the show. Bring that along to you. Big day tomorrow with CPI employment numbers. We'll bring bringing you the show there. Um, it's been a pleasure as always talking with you guys. If you like what you're hearing, hit the like button, ask your questions and comments. We're going to be going through that today. I promise I'm online today. Be answering some questions as you guys toss them forward. We appreciate your support. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with a very big day. Until we talk then, guys, take care. Thanks.